Hello everyone and welcome back to Try New Things where today we're going to try something new once again. Um, it's a chilly day here in Kentucky. You can see my breath. But I got the radiant heater on there and it's keeping my, uh, my at least my backside nice and toasty while I talk to you. But we're going to do something completely different and do some, I would call it an art project. I'm about to try something that has been done successfully many times. There's a few videos on it on YouTube, uh, but more importantly, there's a local lady here uh, in my county uh, that successfully does this on a regular basis and sells them through Facebook Marketplace and whatnot. But today, we're going to use these expelled empty oxygen containers to make some wind chimes. got a nice sound to it what I'm hoping is that this turns out to be somewhat successful uh, at least my first effort if we learn something along the way that's great um, but I did have to buy these in bulk to get a good deal so I think I've got eight I've got eight and I paid two dollars and fifty cents a piece so for 20 bucks I got eight empty oxygen containers and what we're going to do is clean them up uh, open them up cut them up, decorate them, and make some wind chimes out of them. I think it's going to sound a little bit like a ship's bell, but we'll have to wait till the end to find out. So stay tuned on this episode, turning empty oxygen tanks into wind chimes. Now, if you're going to try this at home, strongly recommend that you make sure your tanks have been purged and that everything is safe. Uh, we're going to be doing some cutting on these and uh, want to make sure that uh, no one gets hurt but I've been assured we'll see in a second these oxygen tanks have been purged and my plan is remove the valve we'll know for sure and then uh, we'll, we'll start stripping the paint and the stickers off this after that The other valves aren't this hard. Woo! First job done. Now, unfortunately, in getting this valve off and fighting it with it with a crescent wrench, sledgehammer, finally brought out the old tools and that did the trick. But I've marred up the surface of this tank pretty good with the teeth of the vise. So I'm hoping that'll sand out. Do have some rust we gotta get rid of anyway, so we will be sanding it down. But these uh, fairly deep scratches aren't what I was looking for. May have to bondo some of those and uh, create a new surface. But anyway, next thing we want to do is get the stickers, which you can't see because they're on the other side, off of this tank. And to do that, I'm going to soak them with a uh, wet rag of acetone, and hopefully they'll peel right off. So we got the, uh, the stickers soaking in some acetone, and I'll check back in a minute and uh, see if those will peel off any easier. It's not too bad. So now that we've uh, gone ahead and scraped off all those stickers with a putty knife, which wasn't too difficult at all, it's time to lop the bottoms off these uh, cylinders. And what I'm hoping is my uh, Evolution brand chop saw with the multi-material blade will do the trick. So let's try the first one, cross our fingers, and see if uh, we can't cut through one of these cylinders.
Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Let's do the other two and I'll check back in with you. All right, time to get these to the sander. Well, the flapper disc on the grinder is doing the trick. Made short work of getting all that paint off. Certainly is leaving a mess. This is after just one of three on my workbench. So be prepared for a messy operation, but a flap disc, definitely the right tool for the job. I've got an 80 grit uh, pad on there now, and it does leave some scratches, and there are some deeper scratches I haven't gotten rid of yet. But I'm going to go ahead and use multiple coats of uh, primer on there and then sand the primer down and hopefully that'll take out a lot of those striations left from the sanding and from just wear and tear and abuse that this cylinder has had over its life. Well once again we're going to take advantage of the nice weather and nature's paint booth to prime these tanks. So I'm going to start with the first one and, uh, and I'll check back in with you when all three are complete. Here's how those cylinders are looking after three coats of primer, light sanding, and one coat of paint. So I've opted for red, blue, and brown. There are my three cans of spray paint. So wait for that to dry, put on another coat, and then we'll probably do a clear coat. Last night before I left I uh, brought in the cylinders that I painted out in the tree to here in the garage or the barn and I'm, I'm glad I did because it is blowing a gale and pouring rain today. Now our focus this morning is going to be to make some clangers and flappers so that these things will ring when uh, the wind blows. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. I stopped at Tractor Supply last night and got the biggest set of nuts I could find but hopefully uh, my nuts are going to be big enough. But we'll see. We'll try it out. First thing I'm going to try, I think, is uh, to make the flappers that hang below the, uh, the wind chimes to catch the wind and uh, move the uh, whatever we use for a clanger against the sides of the wind chime. So I was looking around the uh, barn of what we could use, and I found this piece of cedar. And I definitely want to use something that's going to hold up and weather well over time. So I think cedar's a good choice. Kind of a shame to cut such a nice big board. But we'll go ahead, cut a piece off the end, and then it's way too thick. This is about three quarters of an inch. So we'll run it through the uh, thickness planer a bit. Well, the thickness planer has done the trick. I'm down to just over a quarter of an inch thick. And then we'll go ahead and cut some flappers out of this, but I'll tell you, cedar wood chips make a fantastic air freshener here in the, here in the barn. But uh, it also makes a mess, so I'll clean that up as well. And then we'll check back in with you once we get these cut to the right size. So I went ahead and cut these uh, flappers out, three and a half inches wide, but I do want to profile it a little bit and round the corners off. And to do that, it's a great opportunity to try out my Kalamazoo six inch belt sander that I picked up at an auction. And by pick up, I mean I stole it at an auction. I, if, if you've ever looked up how much these things cost, even used, it's insane. Um, and I paid under $100 for it, but anyway, Let's put it to work. Well, 
while I was at it, made a couple spares just in case I screwed one up or I want to make a couple more in the future. I won't have to go through this step again. Next thing we got to do is figure out how all this gets uh, organized inside of the cylinders so that the clanger clangs and the flappers flap and we can hang it from a hook or a tree or something. I picked up this half inch poly rope at Tractor Supply and I'm hoping this will do the trick. So we'll start with this, see how it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll go to plan B. So I went ahead and tried my best to uh, braid on the flapper. Now I've got to feed it through uh, the other end of the cylinder and have this hanging below it to catch the wind. So that's my next step. Try to weave this through and also hook up the nut, which will be my clanger. Now real quick before I feed this through the first cylinder, there's the, uh, the flapper you saw in my attempt at braiding. And then what I did is I put a knot and my biggest nut I could find at tractor supply on top of that. So the nut keeps, I mean the knot keeps the nut from sliding down the rope. And then I've got a further knot further up the rope and that's what's going to stop and uh, keep the rope from sliding through the neck of the cylinder and then once I get it fed through uh, I'll figure out what I'm going to do at the other end. I may braid another loop up there. But well every one I did I got a little bit better at braiding but there we have it. There's our first three. I went ahead and put the old TNT logo sticker on the center one there. Let's get her mounted up and see what she sounds like. Well, that's going to bring another episode of Try New Things to a close. Let me know what you think of those wind chimes down below in the comments. Do me a big favor, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Helps out the channel an awful lot. And until the next video, bye-bye.